Welcome to this quick walkthrough with the Inlets operator. I'm going to show you how to get a public IP address and a TLS certificate for your local Kubernetes cluster using Inlets Pro. Now, the first thing we'll do is we'll create a K3D cluster using um, Kubernetes. We'll then go ahead and install some apps using a command line wrapper for Helm 3 called Arcade. That will be OpenVAS just because it comes with a load balancer, but you could use anything you like. We'll then get an IP and try it out. But then we don't want to stop there. We're going to get a TLS certificate for you from Let's Encrypt. And we'll also pop the bonnet and have a look at how everything works. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to use inlets to get a public IP address for your Kubernetes cluster. Now we're going to start off on docs.inlets.dev and what you'll notice is there's a diagram here that shows that a computer with a private IP address on a private network, whether that's behind NAT or in your hotel room or on your corporate network, can actually get a public IP address through the use of cloud native tunnel. How this works is a WebSocket is set up and then traffic can pass from an external server to your local computer, pretty much wherever it is. It's a very flexible tool. Now, if you think about Kubernetes, how we could integrate that sort of technology, you find something that looks a bit like the inlets operator. And here, if you have a load balancer service, what we can do is detect that, provision a tunnel for you in your favorite cloud, and then um, connect everything up for you. So when somebody hits that public endpoint, effectively they get through to your computer. Packet, DigitalOcean, Scaleway, Google Cloud, AWS, um, and re more recently Azure are supported. And I'm gonna give you a quick demo. So to start with, I just want to use a, a tool called K3D and check that I don't have any clusters. K3D I like because it runs Kubernetes inside Docker and pretty much anybody can get Docker on any machine. You don't even need to have um, anything exotic like a hypervisor, specific hypervisor. Um, and once you're up and running, we can then go ahead and set our context, check that our node is ready and we're, we can pretty much go ahead and, and do something now. So if we look at the services in the cluster, these are cluster IP type. So in order to install something interesting that has a load balancer, I'm just going to add, um, I'm going to add OpenFAS. And what I'll do is I use this tool called Arcade. And Arcade can install a number of interesting applications. Um, you can add Linkerd, Minio Istio, um, Crossplane, MongoDB, pretty much whatever you've got in this list can be added very quickly with same defaults. One of the options for OpenVAS is to use Ingress and a TLS certificate. But in this instance, we just want a, a straight load balancer. I hit enter. And that will be effectively run into the cluster using Helm 3. And we can see the instructions on how we could potentially port forward that and start accessing it. However, we want to be able to share this on the internet. Maybe we need webhooks. Maybe we're working with our colleagues. That's just not going to cut it. So let's see what services we got. We've got two load balancers, which might surprise you. K3D actually ships with traffic, and traffic always creates a load balancer, um, whether you want it or not. Um, and there's these odd IP addresses that obviously are not public IPs. This is, again, something that K3, K3S does out of the box. So I can't access this, and neither can you, if I was to share this with you. The answer is to go ahead and install the Inlets operator and configure it with a cloud token. In my instance, I'm going to use um, a cloud token of DigitalOcean, and Arcade can install this. Arcade is just a wrapper for Helm 3, so if you, if you prefer it, you can actually just go ahead uh, and install the Inlets operator of Helm 3. And so now I want to cat my private license file. You can get a trial for 14 days for free, or you can purchase a, a personal license and token file. This is where we're going to put the DigitalOcean token. Again, if you were using GCP, we've got separate 
um, instructions for that. And then if you're just kind of not really sure what all the options are, you can use dash dash help. Packet projects use this project ID, so does GCP. Um, you might have some other things that you need like organization ID or, or maybe there's a region that's closer to you. For me, I'm in Cambridge, so my best region right now is London 1. And we hit enter. What we see is the Inlet's repository was added by Arcade. This is automating Helm. If you don't have Helm, it installs it for you. And it's got some useful things that we can do. Um, one thing that's not on the output here is that there's actually a CRD and we can get the tunnels and have a look at them when they're running. So let's take a quick look now at our low balances. So we don't have anything on there yet. But what we'll see is this external IP will actually change. Let's check out the logs of the operator. So what have we got here? So we've got a few events firing off. Um, the first event is that we detect that low balancer. We then go off and provision a machine. We set the ID against it, and then we add the IP address. Once the machine's fully up, you'll then see that appear on the get services. And so we can see that IP is now assigned to the service. The other thing we can do is get the tunnels. And the tunnels show you similar information, just in a bit of, of a nicer way. And this is coming from our CRD. Okay, so we've got um, the host ID, which is you can use with DOCTL or um, your cloud provider to go and delete or manage that host if you have to for some reason. Um, we've got a deployment that's going to run alongside our code. If we get deployments in OpenVAS, we'll see that gateway external tunnel come up and that will be connecting to the VM. The VM sometimes can take 10 seconds, sometimes a little longer. And we've got that permanent connection. We can then hit the VM on the outside world, just like we saw in the picture. And that will route through directly to um, whatever service we've got inside our Kubernetes cluster. And it's really as simple as that. So let's go and take a look at our OpenVAS service. Remember we have this tunnel and the reason that we have that tunnel is because we have a service within the OpenVAS namespace of type load balancer. Here's the IP. Now using Inlet's Pro, any number of ports that you expose on that service will automatically be detected and exposed on the other end. There we go, we've got um, 8080. If we look at the other services in the cluster, we'll see that traffic exists and traffic has two ports. It has 80 and 8080. Again, we can do a call on either of those and 443. Of course, this will error because traffic doesn't have any ingress definitions yet, but it is working end to end. So with the OpenFAS configuration, if I type in arcade info OpenFAS, it will tell me how to find the password I need in order to connect to that. And there's a password. And remember, if we ever need that IP address again, it's available on our tunnel CRD entry. And we can open that in a web browser and use the password to log in. Now that IP address can be shared with anyone in the world. And we could also go ahead and um, tunnel out something completely different like MongoDB. One of the things that um, you get with it in Let's Pro is by default, your tunnel will be encrypted from your client all the way to the server and back again. So if I was to go and um, look at the deployment for this, and we look at the parameters that are being used in that tunnel. We will see um, the token. So this has been connected securely using a token, but also WSS, which means it's a secured WebSocket that has TLS on it. And if you are using the free version of Inlets with the operator, you're just gonna get a HTTP tunnel that is not encrypted 
and only supports HTTP, HTTPS traffic. What we're able to do here is punch out any, any TCP. So something that, that I quite like to do um, is to be able to go take that ingress controller because it's got a public IP, we can now go and get certificates from Let's Encrypt. So we can very quickly arcade install Cert Manager to be able to fetch TLS certs. We've got traffic already. And then there's the ability to go and add uh, like a Docker registry and an ingress definition for that, or even an open FAS ingress. And this one we can do and we pass in a domain and email, and then those get corresponded to um, TLS certificates configuration. We could try that, probably have time. So let's uh, go ahead and add Cert Manager. If you've ever installed Cert Manager before, it's a great tool, um, but there is no way you're gonna get it on your system in one command. Arcade does that for you. And now we need to run um, this with help because I need to put a domain. I'm going to put um, alexgateway.myfaz.club and I'll do the same for the email. Now because um, these certificates are rate limited, we don't want to use them up. So I'm going to use a staging definition and ingress class has to be traffic. By default, if you put nothing, it will use um, Nginx, which is also a great ingress controller. So what we should be able to see is some logs. And these logs are saying, oh, that domain, um, that doesn't exist. Well, they're quite right. What we need to do is create that DNS entry. First of all, let's get the tunnel again. And I'm going to use DOCTL um, compute domain create IP address. This is DigitalOcean CLI. I'm going to point that at the traffic tunnel on the external side. That's now created. So Cert Manager will take a little bit of time for that to propagate and for it to see it. But in a short period of time, this request well, this challenge is the HTTP challenge we're using. We'll go all the way to my K3D on my MacBook here, and it will issue that certificate and we'll see it turn up in the browser. This can take a couple of minutes, uh, depending on what TTL you set. Given that we potentially using a um, staging certificate here, again, we need, to do, we need to do it in this way so that we ignore the definition. Let's see, have we got our ingress definition? Yes, we do. Do we put it incorrectly? No, we did not. However, now we have it correct. It is working. So we've got HTTPS, Alex, myfaz.club. And remember, we've got, we've got the secret for OpenFAS. We can get that at any time just by typing arcade info OpenFAS. This is the command we want. And then we get our password back. And why this is important is that you don't really want to be sending passwords over plain text like we did earlier. What we want to do is ideally go through ingress, have a TLS certificate, one that's issued from the production issuer, not the staging one. But staging is fine for testing, it's still encrypted. And we can put in here inlets and invoke our function and get response back. So one thing that might be interesting, and I've done this for my Raspberry Pi, is you can set up this tunnel and leave it there permanently, and then your Raspberry Pi can serve requests over the internet with a full TLS cert. In fact, I do have that, and it's waves.myfaz.club, and this is one that I prepared earlier. Again, if we put HTTPS, we'll see that we've got a full TLS certificate 
from Let's Encrypt. And we can look at the details of it, when it's going to expire. And the great thing about this is that I can now get GitHub Actions or Travis to deploy code to this automatically. I can run it, a Docker registry on it if I want as well. There's all sorts of things that you can do very, very quickly. And just to remind you what we did, we did an arcade install of OpenFAS. We then added the inlets operator, which takes a load balancer and creates a full TCP tunnel and a virtual machine in the cloud. We then installed Cert Manager, which issues TLS certificates. And we use the OpenFAS, OpenFAS Ingress app. And all that does is creates an ingress definition. And if you've ever worked with these, you'll agree with me that they're probably a little bit boring and it's much nicer if they're generated for you by someone else than you having to sort of put these together by scratch. If we want to get rid of our cluster, we just simply do k3d delete and it's gone. However, we can also do k3d stop and then we could take that MacBook Pro to a cafe or on a trip, open the lid, k3d start and that tunnel will reconnect and the same IP is still reserved for you and you can make use of it. In fact, if I type doctl droplet ls grep openvas compute perhaps it's gateway we can see the gateway tunnel with the IP we saw earlier and remember we've got that traffic tunnel and have, I happen to have two of them. I've got the one from that KubeCon example, wavesmyfast.club. That's a permanent tunnel on a Raspberry Pi. And this is the one that's running on my computer, the one that we see there. So go and have a look at this, docs.inlets.dev. You can start out with the open source version of inlets with the operator, or if you're actually ready to go in, um, do something that's secure, encrypted, that can punch out any service you like, go and get a trial for Inlets Pro or buy your personal license. So thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting and there's something that you wanna go ahead and play with now, whether that's your Raspberry Pi, perhaps you have a GPU at work that you wanna make use of, or you've got a database somewhere that you just wanna punch out to the internet instead of paying out of your ear for a managed database. Whatever the use case, any TCP traffic is supported, feel free to reach out on Twitter, Inlets Dev, or you can get in touch with me on Slack. Thank you.